Nextool reached out to me and said they had this machine that could not only laser engrave, but has a separate blade for cutting vinyl. So sure, I'll test it. What could possibly go wrong? Now this is a unique machine. This is the Xtool M1. It's two machines in one. You have a laser and you have a blade cutter, like to cut vinyl. Two separate heads, basically. Well, one head, but two functions. Uh, yeah, I can't actually wait to get this one going here. And we also have a, uh, a smoke purifier, as they call it. Well, it's a, a smoke extractor unit, too, that plugs into the back of this. Yeah, so now I don't have to vent out the window. And with this machine came the material package, the premium material package. And um, I would suggest that anyone that's uh, looking to get this unit, get this. Because you're going to be able to test a wide variety of products. Transfer vinyl, PVC sheets, I mean, you name it. It's got it in here. Woods, a um, couple metal, pieces of metal, like stainless steel tags. Yeah, and it gives you literally all the parameters to either mark or engrave and or cut on these. You can get some rock coasters in here, fabrics, woods, paper. I cannot believe how much they cram into this little box. Some wooden tags and vinyls. You got some heat transfer vinyl and as well as a sticker vinyl. So I'll be using some of these products while demoing. In this kit, you get five replacement blades for the vinyl or paper cutting head. And um, it's pretty simple. All you do is you make sure that you have the razor sharp point out. And we're going to just slide it right in. I can't emphasize how careful to be with this. Uh, maybe some foreshadowing in the future in this video. But you see, it doesn't fall out. And then all you do is slide it in and the magnet makes it nice and secure. You have a 16 megapixel smart camera, an exhaust fan, and there's your laser and your cutting tool. And you have an autofocus, that red dot, put material there and it will automatically focus the height. Make sure everything is on and we're going to launch Xtool Creative Space. And the uh, first thing we really want to do is connect it and make sure that our firmware is up to date. Chances are it isn't and this is a good thing to always do is to make sure that you're running the latest and greatest firmware. Now this took about five minutes to complete. Um, you'll see a little bit of a light show. The, the M1 will power up, power down, and then you'll be ready to start engraving and or cutting. Let's be clear on that. Yes, before we get started, disclaimer, safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always, always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. And I'm not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. And I would like to add that you should always be in a well-ventilated area. If possible, please extract any fumes outside. Get a proper ventilation system that's either filtered or vents outside or both. So with that being said, let's continue on with the X-Tool M1. First thing I want to do is test these rock coasters. Well, that's what the X-Tool calls them. And let's engrave them with something from Christmas Vacation. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. Yes, the perfect holiday gift. So on the right side, as we're adjusting our images, we're going to have it on laser flat. We're going to choose rock coaster. And we're going to do the auto measure because it's right underneath the red dot. And then we're going to just choose engrave. It's pretty, pretty simple. So let's go ahead and kick it off. Now it did take about 15 minutes to do both of them, which isn't too bad, I guess. And um, let's just see how well they came out, shall we? And I can see that's my first one here. It came out really nice, but uh, it's off to the right. It needs to be a little bit more to the left to be fully centered. But uh, it looks like Margot came out really, really good. I didn't wipe these down yet, so these are fresh off the presses. Well, laser. And here I have the USS Enterprise. It's a laser flat. It's set to auto measure and it's for basswood. And it's set to score. And this took about an hour and a half, but I think the results are rather striking. 
and this is just basswood plywood. Look how nice and clear this engraved or scored. Very legible. I mean, it's, it looks better off camera. I am very, very happy in how this came out. But it did take a long time. It took an hour and a half. But yeah, you can see right here. Very, very nice. Now, since this has a camera and we got to make sure that we throw one of those tags right in the center so we get auto measure, we are able to do something what's called smart fill. We can do a test here. Now on the right hand side, we're going to adjust our uh, settings here. Change the material to three millimeter basswood. Do the auto uh, thickness, auto measure, and brought it down to 2.2. And now what we're going to do is uh, shrink down our little test wording here and um, yeah, move it around. From fine adjustments, you can use your arrow keys up, down, left, right, and uh, you can use the pivot on the top to align it. Then we're going to go back to our side here and we're going to choose engrave. In the upper left, we're going to then choose smart fill and watch what will happen. All the tags get filled. Now, darker materials, it has a complication with it, but uh, and you may have to adjust some of these individually. You do have full control to adjust and tilt any of them as you see fit. Then once you have everything aligned as you see fit, you're going to hit process and it's that easy. And after you hit process, you have the option to frame it or you can just hit start. But either time, you're going to have to hit the button on the front of the machine to execute that, that job, framing or to start it. I did find the counter to be a little bit off by a few minutes, but it did process this in about uh, 13 minutes. And look at that. All of them came out the way that they were. Now, I did not adjust some of these, so some of them have a little bit of a tilt to it, and I just basically click and ran with it. I just wanted to make sure none of them were overshooting the edges and engraving into the plate below. But uh, before we continue on, I'd like to introduce today's video sponsor. And today's video sponsor is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB? Well, look no further than PCB Way. They're their one stop shop for your PCB and manufacturing needs. Want to just generate a quote? It's pretty simple. Then you could do a standard PCB, advanced PCB, you could do a FTC rigid flex PCB, you could do some assembly, and you could also do SMD stenciling. But that's not it. They also offer CNC and um, 3D printing. <laughs> it's literally a one-stop shop for all your needs. You're looking for a little project to do? Look at the shared projects. And you could go ahead and basically order a whole kit and just do a little project that someone else has created. It's a great community section for to share your ideas and have other people build the projects that you are working on. And I would like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue on with the XTool M1. Now let's try a stainless steel dog tag. Now this is also a 455 nanometer laser. So you're only going to be able to mark it. You will not be able to engrave stainless steel. But they have a setting for this. And if you just go to the right, you'll see dog tag. You're going to do the auto measure. And we're going to choose engrave. It's pretty darn easy. But it's dark, so the silver-ish tint is hard for the camera to pick up. So I'm just doing some fine-tuning with my arrows before I hit process. And it looks like my eyes weren't deceiving me. This is probably the first time I ever did a dog tag on one of these systems. First time. It looks pretty good. Pretty centered. I guess it could have gone to the right a little bit, but... Very clear and legible, and Bear has a new tag, so he'll be happy. Now, for cutting and help get air circulation underneath, you use these triangles to suspend your part, since it doesn't have like a honeycomb bed or anything. So you just place these every few inches of part, or closer, depending on the width of your material. You want to make sure it's on triangular prism and cut. And we're going to cut out these two pieces. Uh, this is a front and back for a ornament that we're going to put together for Christmas, of course. And uh, yeah, some pieces already fell through. And it looks like um, we're going to need some assistance uh, 
some persuasion, so to speak, to get some of these other pieces to come out. But it came out rather cleanly. I'm impressed with it. But uh, we need to clean up the bed here uh, before we go and switch to cutting some vinyl. You can see that there's some residual from the laser cutting and we're gonna just use some spray away glass cleaner. Just make sure you get only on the bed below. And I just did something. Jeez, that's much. Better put a little ouchy spray on it. Yeah, I just put my hand underneath that uh, sharp little razor blade. We are going to use the low stick mat for this one. And um, we got to pull the protective covering off on each side. Now I suggest saving those to, so you could uh, reuse it. And um, yeah, it's my little ouchie is getting in the way here. I think I need to take care of it right now. Mm -hmm. There we go, all better. I should have had the wife kiss it to make it even feel a lot better. Anyways. You just got to line up the sheet to those little lines and you're all set. The stickiness is what helps keep the material down. And we're going to just put down some uh, sticker vinyl down. Now this is very, very, very important. On the right side, you're going to choose blade cut, blade cut. And this will ensure that you're using the blade feature. And then we're going to choose um, the self adhesive vinyl. Okay, to cut this out. And what's nice was when you do the outline, it uses the laser dot to show you the preview. And then you just go ahead and do the cut. And this is in real time. Of course, there's not much detail to this. It's basically just a outer trace and a little circle on the inside. And we're done. Now it would be helpful if you have some picking tools to, uh, get this up, but I use the little exacto knife and uh, just peel it and look how nice and clean that cut is. Maybe some other red there. And I just stuck it onto the other part. And look, look at that. We got a colorful ornament to hang on your tree. You could leave it wood or you could paint the wood. Uh, that's pretty cool, huh? Never thought I would do that. Yeah, crafty devil, huh? To honor my injuries and all, I think it's uh, about time we uh, customize the front of the machine a little bit. Yep. Don't ever uh, do what I did. It's um, it's rather painful. I mean, it was a it's a very sharp blade, but look how nice and clean that cut out. See, it doesn't take much time to add a little personal touch to anything. Now you can do a rotary in this, but we have to remove a few screws and remove this bottom plate and um, yeah it's a uh, kind of a weird process uh, they did design this machine to have a rotary built in or option because it has a plug on the back and I really don't get this process but I'm gonna walk it through with you anyways so we remove these five screws here okay and after we remove the five screws you will then remove this plate. It just comes out. Not that difficult. But now we have a hole in the bottom, which is okay. And then we have these four risers. They're made out of wood. Pretty cool, I guess. We are going to use the RA2 Pro. We're going to plug in the wire harness right here. And then in the back of the machine, we have a keyed source to plug it into as well. Now I will have a link in the the card in the upper right hand corner for the RA2 Pro if you want to get a more deeper look into this really, really nice Chuck style rotary. So we're going to place this uh, mug in here and uh, we're going to just go ahead and tighten it down here and so it has a nice grip. Give it a spin, make sure that it's nice and flush. We are now going to make sure that it's under the red dot for the height and make sure it's level. That way our laser will not hit it or get out of focus. We're going to drop in our image and our text and we're going to change from laser flat to laser cylinder, cylindrical. Okay, and now we're going to just mess around with our image a little bit. Um, I think it's a little bit too big and we'll bring it around like maybe like 60 millimeters in size 
and then we will do the diameter of 80 and then we are going to hit the auto measurement and this will bring everything into focus here there we go it's pretty much it um, now the problem is is I don't know which material I'm going to use and I'm just going to choose this business card holder for now and up oh, almost dragged my image off now I'm going to just move it down a little bit and that's about it that's all I think we're going to do to it and then we're going to kick off the engraving and you may want to just make sure that you do a uh, framing on it to make sure it's where you want it this did take about 30 minutes to do and um, it's actually not that bad of a process the machine setup this is what takes the longest and but you don't also have any way to orient it to see if it's uh, straight or not and about 25 minutes later, here we go. Let's go ahead and unscrew it here from the chuck. And yeah, came out uh, pretty good. Uh, I'll probably have to do a higher setting because it was still didn't get rid of all of uh, the powder coating. Well, I definitely think this M1 has a lot going for it. I love that the fact that it's enclosed and uh, it has some real nice quality components on here. And that uh, you can vent it right outside, right out of the box. So you can get rid of all those awful gases and particulates that shouldn't be in your room or garage. And then if you decide to get this smoke purifier, wow, I'm telling you, look at the size of this darn filter that's in here. It is a monster. And I did not smell any smoke. Well, we'll get into the other parts in a few minutes here but it, it it was just great it was great to work with it uh i could smell some of the wood but i there was definitely no smoke anywhere it did what it's supposed to do and it's variable for how much suction you need on it definitely worth the investment and i really think this is a great combination having the laser as well as a vinyl slash paper cutter I mean just um, imagine all the projects and creations that you can do just from this one machine however it's not all biscuits and gravy so to speak now I just don't get this set up at all it takes forever to set up you can't really align anything and you lose all the functionality of having a, a an extraction system to get all the nasty air out because look at this big gap underneath yeah, this extractor here did not work at all because of that big air gap. If you're going to use a rotary on here, get just by the riser with the honeycomb bed. It, that way your machine still stays somewhat sealed and it's a little bit easier to manage. But I, that's all I got. So hopefully I've given you guys enough information whether this machine is right for you. There is a special promotion going on for Black Friday. If you're interested, deals are in the links are in the description below. And um, please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in to Tripod's Garage.